Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be reviewing the GKU D700, GKU's latest dashcam. A big thank you to GKU for sending me this to review. It's a two channel front and rear touchscreen dashcam, with 4K at the front and 1080p full HD at the rear. It costs £130 on Amazon UK. Let's test it out. First the user manual, contact information card, two electrostatic stickers, the main camera unit, it looks nice and is a good size, not too big, not too small, rear camera and cable, card charger adapter power cable with extra USB port so you can charge your power on another device, trim tool to help with insulation and removal put in the SD card if you don't have nails, which reminds me it also comes with a branded 64GB micro SD card, some cable clips to help you with running the cables in the car, and two spare adhesive stickers for the front camera, but no spare for the rear. I'm wondering if maybe there should be one for the rear, but I suppose you could cut down one of the front ones to make it fit the rear. An extra you can get if you'd like to have parking mode is the hardwiring kit, which includes a card briefly telling you how to install it, and the hardwiring kit itself which of course is used in replacement of the car charger adapter power cable. Right, let's get this set up in my car. So the camera is now on. There we go. Recording. Free channel started. And it has a voice notification to tell you, which is really useful. I like that. It only has one button on the side, which acts as the power button to turn it on and off, or you can press it to lock video locked. the video, which is brilliant. It's really easy to find, so that works really well. If you want to lock a file, you can see you've got all the various things. You can also look the file with the touch screen. It displays both the views and you've got the settings and microphone and Wi-Fi. So if you want the Wi-Fi for this to connect to the app, you press that button and then the Wi-Fi comes up. Unfortunately, my phone doesn't support 5G Wi-Fi, so I can't actually show you, but Dashcam Daz will be doing a review video as well and his will definitely show you. So yeah, if you want to see that, you can watch his video. So I'm going to go through the settings on this camera. So you press that button. Stop recording like that and then you get these three options here which is of course the recording, the Wi-Fi, the playback and the settings. So the Wi-Fi that just turns the Wi-Fi on and brings up the same thing as before. Playback, of course, it divides up all the things into different uh, folders which you can then decide which one of course you are after. So if you're after the front, you can click the front and it has all the front files there. So again, really good, I think that's brilliant. You can delete any ones you want to delete, so that works really well. And then you've got the settings here. So you've got all the usual settings like the resolution. There, there's your three options. And you can choose how long you want the video segments to be, the frequency, everything you'd ever want on the dash cam is here, and all the settings. There's no Wi-Fi setting, which is why I can't change the Wi-Fi to 2.4, which is why I can't connect my phone, but it's got absolutely everything else. The touch screen's pretty good, to be honest with you, but you do sometimes accidentally you know, if you're, you might accidentally press something you don't want to press or something, but it, I mean, it's pretty good to be honest with you. Start recording. And the voice notifications are really nice. So yeah, if you want to lock the video, you can press it there video as well. But I think the outer button is definitely easier. But overall, this camera is really easy to use, even if you don't use the app. And it looks good. It's not too big. It would fit behind the mirror really nicely if I didn't have the other camera. And the rear camera, of course, is at the back facing out. So, shall we see what the footage is like? There's what next to do with her, really.
front camera is 4K at 30 frames per second and it does a good job. I've taken some screenshots to see how good it is at capturing number plates. I have to say I'm very impressed that you can read the oncoming vehicles. Number plates pretty well even at higher speeds. Cloud, sun and rain all week. So she kept herself busy. She kept herself oh, really yeah. busy. And they got still got three children. The rear camera is 1080p full HD at 30 frames per second. And there is one big thing I wasn't expecting for the price. The rear camera is recording the wrong way around. For me that's quite a big disappointment. But as with any budget 4K dash cam, there's always going to be a compromise. And in this case, it's the rear camera. So, I've got a, the Cadillac's go, got an issue with pain, the bumper. The person I've taken to is a little bit of perfectionist. So, he just wants me to check it out. I want to make sure I'm happy with it. Um, it's bumped. It's been off several times, it's not quite attached with the original fitting, let's just say that. So it's a good opportunity to check the audio on the dash cam. Hopefully you can hear me alright over the road noise. The AC is on setting two. A little bit rattling. Not quite sure where that's coming from. Yeah, so it'd be a good test for the audio anyway. The audio is very good. It's not too quiet, so I don't have to boost the audio. But just be warned the voice notifications are very loud. Oh, recording. Overall, if you want a two-channel dashcam with 4K at the front, on a limited budget, it's a pretty good choice, as it has everything you'd want, GPS, etc. The touchscreen is a nice feature to have. I'm not 100% sure that it's less fiddly to use than the buttons, as you can easily press something by accident. But I haven't come across a touchscreen in a dashcam before, so it's certainly a nice feature to have. My only issue is for £130, I'd want the rear camera to be the correct way around. But you do get 30 frames per second for both cameras, which is nice for a budget 4K dashcam. And you get 1080p at the rear, rather than 480p. So you have to compromise somewhere. And you can just obviously flip the rear camera in editing software to make it the quite way around. So it's not really that much of a deal breaker. But if you'd like to see another budget friendly 4K dashcam with all the cameras the correct way around, why not check out my review of the King's Limb D6. And until next time, a goodbye.